cosmic microwave background lensing. Uh, this is a process in which the radiation from the birth of the universe uh, that comes to us from the edge of the observable universe is deflected on its way to us. It's, it's lensed. So what does, how do we think about this? Imagine you had uh, uh, the sun, for example, and light from a distant star came to us by the sun. Because of the mass of the sun, this light gets deflected. The exact amount of deflection uh, is computable from the general theory of relativity. Indeed, this is one of the triumphs of the general theory of relativity as it could predict this correctly. As we sit here in our observatories in, on Earth and we look out at the microwave background coming to us from this, uh, the surface of last scattering, the edge of the observable universe, the light comes to us and as it passes through mass in the universe on the way to us, it is deflected by tiny amounts. And this effect is called gravitational lensing. Uh, uh, one way to think about it is, is imagine you had um, you know, patterned glass in say a shower stall or something like that and you put an object behind it. It would be, you, it would be lensed by the patterns in the glass. But here it's this whole surface of glass scattering is lensed by all the matter between us and the surface. So how, how do, can we possibly detect it, right? There is, here we are, there is just we're one universe to sample, right? We can't get beyond it. We can't get to the edge of the surface of last scattering. So we have to look at this radiation and somehow figure out that it has been lensed, right? We, we don't see it unlensed. So how do we do that? Well, first, what does, this, what does the lensing actually look like? It takes the original pattern and it alters it ever so slightly. In effect, and, and this is what we see, it takes scales that are a couple of times the size of the moon, degree angular scales, and it just shifts them. And it shifts them by about, oh, say, a, a tenth to a thirtieth the size of the full moon. I'm just using the full moon as an angular scale. So it takes patterns of radiation from the surface of last scattering and just shifts them ever so slightly all around the, all around the sky randomly according to the, the radiation between us and the surface of last scattering. So this is what happens and, and how can we know what happens? We just observe the microwave background. There's a very special property of the microwave background that allows us to be able to tell that it has been gravitationally lensed by the mass. And that, pro that property is called Gaussianity. And what it means is that if we took the microwave background and we say we bend it up into, into little bins and we then plotted the temperature, the temperature distribution of all those little bins, it would follow a Gaussian curve. That is, it's, it's the, what is this, on the surface of last scattering, the microwave background changes in temperature by a part in 100,000. So we chop up all those little bits, those little squares. We'd just record their temperature. We'd say, uh, we'd say you know, there are 100 of them larger than this value, uh, another 100 colder than this value, and we just plot that distribution and it would it would follow that famous Gaussian bell curve. What also happens is this lensing works on polarization. So the mass distribution between us and the surface of last scattering takes one kind of polarization called an E-mode polarization and turns it in to and, and, and changes its symmetry and adds to it another type of polarization called the B-mode. So first, what is an E-mode in polarization? In E-mode, um, imagine that you just had a pattern of little directional uh, arrows that told you the direction of polarization. 
and you took that pattern and you held it up in, in a mirror and you, and you looked to see if it changed, right? If you had a pattern of pure radial spokes and you put it in a mirror, it wouldn't change. If you had a pattern of polarization that went around in a circle, it wouldn't change in a mirror. Those are called E-modes. That's how they're defined by what they look like when they're reflected in a mirror. If instead you had B modes, if you had a pattern that looked like a pinwheel and you looked at that in a mirror, all those would flip. They'd flip over, right? Because pinwheels flip when you look at them in a mirror. That's called the B mode. And, and the, the, the notion of looking at it in a mirror is called a, a parity transform. The early universe, the polarization from the early universe, uh, as, as long as there are no gravitational waves, the polarization is a pure E-mode pattern. Now, that E-mode pattern comes to us, it traverses the universe, and is lensed by all this mass between us and the surface of last scattering. That breaks the symmetry and adds to that E-mode pattern a little bit, just by deflecting all these little arrows, it adds to it a little bit that has this other parity, this odd parity, this B-mode type term. And so E-modes are lensed, we get E-modes through, and we get B-modes through. So why, why is that special? It turns out that this process of lensing is especially sensitive to the mass of the neutrino. The lensing is, it's, you can almost relate the amount of B-mode polarization directly, where well, you can relate the amount of B-mode polarization to the mass, some of the masses of neutrinos. It's a characteristic and distinctive signature. And so what we're doing with the Atacama Cosmology Telescope, with say the South Pole Telescope, with the Polar Bear Telescope, and, and with the uh, Planck uh, satellite, is we're trying to find this signature of B modes and it has recently been seen. We're taking this pattern of B modes and over the next years, over the future, we will then relate that pattern of B modes to the sum of the masses of neutrinos and extract it almost uniquely. So this is, this is very exciting and, and, and many groups are working on it. So what does lensing do? Lensing slightly alters the statistics of the microwave background. It goes from being Gaussian to being ever so slightly non-Gaussian. And so in order to see that there's been lensing, you, you make these observations and you want to extract from that distribution the slight non-Gaussian part. Maps of the sky have gotten so precise that we can do this. We can separate out that ton, tiny non-Gaussian part uh, from just the temperature of loan. This was first done by the Atacama Cosmology Telescope. It has been done brilliantly from the Planck Telescope, from the, uh, the South Pole Telescope, also has seen this uh, really nicely, and re most recently the Polar Bear uh, Telescope has seen this. So, and, and, uh, and it looks apparently the BICEP telescope has seen this. And so we're all seeing this very, this very small but distinctive signature of, the, uh, of, of gravitational lensing. So, big deal. What's, what's it good for? So in here is, here's why it's so fantastic. Here's why it's so exciting. So it is lensed because of all the mass in the universe between us and the surface of last scattering, going out that way. So this means now that we can just use this light to see where all the mass of the universe is. We are already making maps that say, okay, between us and the edge of the observable universe, between us and the surface of last scattering, there's more mass here, less mass here, more here, and we're making maps of the mass from this lensing. What is going to happen over time is we then start to compare 
lensing of the microwave background to lensing of, say, galaxies at a certain distance from us or a greater distance from us. And from these comparisons, we will build up not just a projected picture of all the mass in the universe, but a picture, a, a more of a three-dimensional picture of where all the mass in the universe is. We're going down this path now where we have evolved from using the microwave background to study the surface of last scattering at the edge of the observable universe to using the microwave background, cosmic microwave background, to assess everything in the universe from that surface down to where we are, down to very close to where we are now. So this is an exciting frontier and we have much more to learn about the universe and its contents from these measurements of gravitational lensing. <laughs>